says that the biotechnology drug interferon gamma 1b act immune contains 100 microgram per 0 0.5 milliliters calculate the percentage strength of the solution so let's go ahead and actually get right into the question and one of the things that is important for us to understand is what percentage concentration actually means so when we talk about percentage concentration you have different types but for this scenario you have a solute in a solvent and the way you capture percentage concentration is some amount in grams out of 100 milliliters that is the definition of percentage concentration so the first thing that we need to do is actually take this information here which is some type of concentration and express that in such a way that you have some amount of grams in 100 milliliters and so what that will look like is you will start off with 100 microgram in 0 0.5 milliliters and we are going to set up a proportion and say how many grams will be in 100 milliliters so that's the definition of percentage concentration so once we solve for x which is our unknown that will be the percentage now because you have a proportion the units in the denominator should be the same on both sides of the equation and the units in the numerator should be the same so for the milliliters we find out that yes you have milliliters in the denominator on both sides but in the numerator you actually have in micrograms on the left hand side and grams on the right hand side so we need to convert the micrograms to grams so that we can actually use this proportion the way to set up so we can do a quick conversion we take the 100 microgram and then we do a conversion and we make use of the information that 1 times 10 to the power 6 microgram is equivalent to 1 gram. So at this point, the micrograms will cancel out. And then you end up with 1 times 10 to the negative 4 grams. Now, by the way, if you do have a question, you can just put it in the chat. I'm monitoring the chat box and I will try to address it if it's possible within the um, solution so we now have the 100 micrograms in grams and so we can go ahead and put it back into our proportion so we will say 1 times 10 to the negative 4 grams out of 0 0.5 milliliters should be equal to some quantity in grams divided by 100 milliliters now we can go ahead and solve for x which is our unknown so x is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 4 grams times 100 milliliters all of that divided by 0 0.5 milliliters and so that ends up giving us 0 0.02 percent so when you take 100 micrograms out of 0 0.5 ml it's equivalent to 0.02 percent now if you wanted to be real specific this is actually weight by volume because you have different types of percentage concentrations you have weight by volume weight in weight and volume in volume so i'll, I'll put a link to the lecture on percentage concentrations in the description and in the card so that you can actually refresh your thought process if you need a review so that was the first question that the viewer sent in and i don't see any questions in the chat box at this point in time so i'll go ahead and solve the second part of the question or the second question so this was the second question that was sent by the same viewer and it says a tissue plasminogen activator, TPA, ophthalmic solution 
is prepared to contain 25 micrograms in 100 microliters. A. Calculate the percentage concentration of TPA in the solution and B. What volume of a solution containing TPA 50 milligrams per 50 milliliters should be used to prepare each 100 microliter of the atomic solution? So let's delve right in. And for A, we want to express the 25 micrograms in 100 milliliters as a percentage concentration. So the way we want to do that is to take this concentration, that would be the 25 micrograms out of 100 microliters, and we want to set it equal to the definition of percentage concentration, which is some quantity in grams divided by 100 milliliters. So what we notice is we need to have the units on both sides of the equation to be consistent. Otherwise, you can't really set up a proportion, okay? So we have microliters on the left, but we have milliliters on the right, so we need to fix that. And also, we have micrograms on the left of side of the equation, and we have grams on the right. So we need the grams, but we need to convert the micrograms to grams. So we're going to take a slight mental detour and do a quick conversion. And we'll take the 25 micrograms divided by 100 microliters, and we'll try to convert the units of micrograms to grams and the units of microliters to milliliters. So that would imply that 1 times 10 to the power 3 microliters or 1,000 microliters is the same as 1 milliliter. And then also, we can say that 1 times 10 to the power 6 microgram is equivalent to 1 gram. So the micrograms cancel out and the microliters cancel out. What we are using right here is dimensional analysis. And so the way that works is once you're done canceling out the units, you take all the numbers in the numerator, 25 times 1,000 or 1 times 10 to the power 3 times 1 gram. All of that divided by 100 times 1 milliliter times 1 times 10 to the power 6 or a million. So what you'll notice is we are now in units of grams and milliliter. Now we can go back and put that into the equation or set up the proportion afresh. And that would imply that we now have basically 25,000 grams divided by 1 times 10 to the 8 milliliters. And now that should be equal to some quantity in grams divided by 100 milliliters. So we can go ahead and solve for the unknown, which is actually x. So x equals 25,000 grams divided by 1 times 10 to the 8 milliliters times 100 ml. That cancels out, and we end up with 0.025%. So that would be the percent history, and that's part A. We can then go ahead and do part B. And the way the question is framed is you have some kind of a stock solution, and the concentration is 50 milligrams in 50 ml, and we want to find out how much volume from here we can use to prepare the 100 microliter solution. But notice that in each 100 microliters, we have 25 micrograms. So what we can do is we can take this concentration, which is the 50 milligrams in 50 milliliters, And we want to 
make it easier to do the math. So we are going to put everything in terms of micrograms and microliters, okay? So if you really know how the units work, you can actually simply keep the numbers the same and change the units. But let's go through the conversion. Because what ends up happening is you have one milliliter being equivalent to a thousand microliters. And then you have one milligram being equal to a thousand micrograms. So the milligrams cancel out and the milliliters cancel out. So now you're in microliters, micrograms per microliter. But notice that you have a thousand in the denominator and it, it cancels out a thousand in the numerator. So you essentially have the same numbers, but then you end up with different units. So that would be 50 micrograms in 50 microliters. But we can now set up a proportion to figure out how many micrograms will be in 100 microliters. Because that's what we're really looking for, right? So now, if we go ahead and solve for x, we would have uh, delivered the answer to that question, okay? So x equals 50 micrograms divided by 50 microliters times 100 microliters. The units cancel out, and that cancels out, and you end up with 100 micrograms. So that's how you would really approach those two questions. So thank you to the viewer who sent those questions. It took me some time. I didn't really see it in the email. Um, but that's how you do those two problems. Now, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments, and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you like this type of interactive live session, like to ask questions, have me answer them, then just put that in the comments as well, because I plan to continue this if there's a lot of support for it and now publish a schedule accordingly. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.